I'm back with my commentary of Ten of Swords, and we're talking about the tarot cards themselves. This is the X-Men event of the year from Teeny Howard and Jonathan Hickman and many other writers as well, many other artists. My two favorite artists, Grassi and Loraz, right now working in comics. And I'll tell you right now, they're so much to consider when we're talking about tarot cards, specifically these tarot cards together. So like I said, a lot to consider with tarot. You know, I'll, I'll say this. Usually when it comes to a tarot reading, people are talking about uh, possibly predicting the future, you know, uh, hopefully being able to see into future events. And that's the kind of perspective that you get. I always like to look at cards and think that they're a possible warning for the negative things that could happen. And then how could I look at this to say, I do not want this to occur. How can I create a more possible, pleasurable outcome from all of these situations? What do I have to learn from this possibility of this dark future that I'm looking at? And how can I change that to my advantage? And that's where I think that a lot of people have differing perspectives about tarot. I honestly don't think that I will ever be able to tell the future with these cards, but I like to look at the symbolism specifically and see how it pertains to my life and how I can change my life specifically to make it a better place to live in. So, you know, when it comes to that, this is actually a tool for personal development but a lot of people do see it as fortune telling. And when it comes down to that, it has this dark, mystical, creepy kind of vibe to it. Like, I can't change the future. Uh, life is predestined, and no matter what I do, I won't be able to change it. Well, uh, <laughs> F that. I don't, I don't agree with that. I do believe that everything is in our hands when it comes down to shaping our own futures. And so... You know, when it comes to tarot in my own life, of course, I just like to use it as a way to, you know, hopefully not make a bunch of mistakes that I've made in my own past. So usually when people are doing quote unquote fortune telling, there is a querent involved. There's a person asking a question. They want to know something and they want to find some better insight into their life. And so that's not really the way that this is going down because we have Saturnine in this story and she is wanting to find out future events overall. This doesn't necessarily have to do with her own life. It has to do with the events in the story possibly, or it has to do with Apocalypse's life. So if I was looking at these tarot cards and we're letting them unfold from judgment to four of wands, the hanged man, eight of cups and 10 of swords. And as those move through this succession, it is literally a sequential art. This is a story. And, uh, you know, if I was looking at someone's life or events, and I was going to read their tarot cards, using these cards, I would say, you know, Quarant sits down at my table, and I, I would say, you know, if I was reading for this individual, it, it kind of is a fast explanation, honestly, because I want to get into the storyline. But this is a person who you know, they're awakening from rebirth, that judgment card. And they're basically leaving the past behind. They're, they're, they're welcoming these gifts of the family in Four of Wands. And they're welcoming in this sense of community. And, and even with that comes another sense of rebirth in this card. You know, as the hangman approaches, they're, they're learning a hard lesson. They're, they're having to go through a literal dark night of the soul where, you know, they're suffering. They're suffering with reason. They're suffering from, from cause. And with Eight of Cups, they're looking at dejection. They're looking at a sadness and they're being rejected by a, a hope that's, that's just been cast away. They're seeing abandonment. And at the end of this whole entire pilgrimage, in the Ten of Swords, they're seeing death, destruction, and ruin. Again, looking at this from the perspective of the story, we could be talking about Apocalypse. It would make so much sense in that context that this story that just unfolded very quickly, because again, I, I really didn't go into any detail about the symbolism within the cards, but 
it could very well be apocalypse that we're talking about with this story. Now, looking at it from a perspective of all of the words written on these cards throughout all both of the issues and the cards themselves, I want to approach this from a storytelling perspective. What are the writers meaning by this? We're talking about Teeny Howard and we're talking about Jonathan Hickman. In their words here, these white words on these cards, what do they mean? And what does this mean in accordance to the story? So looking at it like this, the very first, and hey, look, you know, uh, the free comic book day book, the uh, creation number one, both of these have the same cards, well, almost, and they have different words on them. So first, I'm going to approach this by looking at the free comic book day card. I'm going to look at this from the creation card, and then I'm going to look at the, the mutant, Tarot. She drew these cards differently, and I'm going to look at her commentary and her perspective on this card. So first and foremost, we're looking at the card Judgment. And just for the sake of, uh, you know, everything here, the cards that I'm looking at, uh, Kim Huggins was the writer in this deck, is the Tarot Illuminati. It is a clone of the Rider Weight deck, which is the most commonly used um, tarot card deck uh, right now, today. Uh, the second being Thoth by uh, Aleister Crowley. So the Judgment card itself, it's it, it, it's hearing a call to rebirth. It's You can kind of think about this as the Phoenix rising from the ashes, you know? It's freeing oneself from being held back. It's moving forward from the past. It's awakening, and it's freedom from suffering. And in this case, written on the, on the, on the card in the free comic book day, it says, finality, an irrevocable change. From here, there is no going back. Surrendering to rebirth is the only path ahead. That's exactly what that card means. <laughs> On the creation book, it says, the death of death and the new way forward. That's fantastic. The witch breed bring back their own dead now. Have they considered what else from the past awakens in the earth? What rises to face those who call themselves immortal? That's fantastic. So that's asking a question specifically. Of course, look, this card is very possibly talking about the gift of immortality in Krakoa. When all mutants can be raised from the dead, of course, a lot of people say that takes away all stakes. But could it actually add more stakes, right? When you think about this, there is something else to this card. It says right here, it says, have they considered what else from the past awakens in the earth? What rises to face those who call themselves immortal? So it looks like there may be another immortal enemy. And we're seeing that right now, of course, in this book, Creation. Um, lots of fun things to consider. What does this mean? <laughs> well, Tarot drew her own cards here. And it says judgment. It is not a judgment in the way we think of it, but in the way the priests taught it in my youth. Final judgment and the rule in heaven. Uh, hint, hint, Krakoa, it typically means spiritual growth, but I think it's funny. Uh, re rebirth is surely a gift of Krakoa. Yes, of course, she didn't just hint it out. She said exactly what she meant in that situation. Um, so, hey, you can, uh, I think we're talking about Krakoa, okay? I'm just going to say it right there. I could be wrong. I'd love to hear what you have to say in the comments below. Look, hey, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. I know I didn't say that earlier. Um, we're going through the tarot cards here, and the second card is Four of Wands. This is a very positive card. And, you know, we're, we're, what we're talking about here is kind of the harvest after a completion. You know, this is having a foundation. When you think about four wands, what could they do? Four pillars could hold up a house, quite literally, holding up a community. It is a symbol of a foundation, and some people even consider this a kind of marriage of a sense, marriage to community. Um, this is security. This is a will of being grounded, right? This is about hearth and family. So in the Illuminati deck, it's called, this is called the Thanksgiving of hearth and home. 
So this could very well be Apocalypse welcoming back the Four Horsemen, his children. In fact, they are on this card. They are the, the, the who appears on here. So from Free Comic Book Day, it says, the labors of a community, a family coming together for a black ceremony, a baptism of blood. That absolutely sounds like what happened when Apocalypse approached them and uh, was murdered, was <laughs> just completely uh, um, uh, struck down. So in creation, it says on this card, a family that has been fighting for aeons in one final confrontation before the, they rest over the ashes of the defeated. <laughs> they crave the last battle and the spoils of victory. They have built a hard home and one must dwell within. Uh, there, there you have it. I really feel like this is the card of Apocalypse being struck down. You know, maybe this uh, tarot reading doesn't tell the entire story of the entire event, you know, because again, we see two, two events that have already happened in this, in this comic book, 72 page comic. Maybe, oh, wouldn't this be cool? Maybe we'll get a different tarot reading for every one of the main books for these two that are remaining. Um, that'd be really cool. I would love that. Okay. So this final is, it's the commentary here on um, tarot, uh, you know, the mutant tarot, her commentary on the four of wands. It says, this is a good card. Yes. It can mean you have finished something or are returning to something. Um, f four can be a good number for this sort of thing. Four walls make a house. No, um, the Zorn brothers would consider four quite an inauspicious number. So it varies. Um, interesting that we're bringing up the Zorn brothers. Uh, look forward to hearing a little bit more about that, of course. So moving on, uh, continuing with the reading, up next is The Hanged Man. Uh, this card, quite literally in the deck that I am using, means the dark night of the soul. We're talking about surrender, letting go, giving in, but most of all, a sacrifice, a willing sacrifice. This is being able to see things from a different angle, and this is about giving up your higher self for what you believe is the greater good. And so this is interesting because, you know, we're talking about becoming a willing sacrifice. Is this what Apocalypse did when he allowed um, those to strike him down, his family? I do not know. Uh, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Of course, please um, drop those comments below. On the free comic book day card, the white words say sacrifice. Curious, can any of them be trusted to throw themselves on the pyre of change? This looks like the what would have been the initial team uh, going in to, uh, you know, save Banshee from, uh, uh, you know, from from the forces of uh, um, Ameth. But there's a couple differences here. If you look at the free comic book day card, a uh, glob isn't on there, but instead it's rock slide. Uh, the summoners on there. Th this is very interesting because there are two different characters uh, and two taken away. So that's an interesting thing as well. On the creation card, it says here, no men hang, but something has been suspended indeed. Time, natural laws, and earthly attachments. They bring themselves here to the game at the gallows. What do they wager to lose? I think we're talking about the team here because it clearly is representing these people. What do they have to lose? Well, maybe their lives, maybe, huh, hey, maybe being reborn. Who knows? I think that for the first time, we're going to have some questions about this rebirthing process of immortality with, you know, the five resurrecting mutants. Well, we shall see. Who knows? So Tarot, was she was drawing these cards um, her her depiction of this, what she had to say in her commentary on the hanged man, well, you know how he got that way. He's hanging because he is sacrificing himself. Sometimes this one means you have to, uh, what's the phrase? Kill your sweethearts or something? These latter cards are less pleasant, it seems. <laughs> That's absolutely true. And these very last couple of cards are actually going to be the least pleasant of all of these. And this one here. This is a positive way of looking at the Eight of Cups. And I really like Kim Huggins and the way she approaches this in the Illuminati deck that I'm using because this is a dark card. It is about dejection. It is about abandonment. <clears throat> but in her deck, 
She also adds this kind of searching for spiritual truth. And we have that as well in the previous card, The Hanged Man. It is a sacrifice for spiritual um, um, enlightenment, so to speak. And so, you know, this is the card of leaving something behind, being abandoned, but letting it go, right? And so what I feel like this card clearly means, we're talking about Genesis, you know, in my opinion, in the storyline. We're looking at the white words from Free Comic Book Day, and it says disillusionment and abandonment. That which was once the harmonious lifting of voices and now is now a mocking echo, then silence. And I, 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 I feel like both of these faces are Genesis. We're looking at, um, we're looking at this... Um, I think maybe uh, Genesis is this person in this mask. So uh, I'd like to see that that's totally true. Um, I'd love for <laughs> I, for me to be correct <laughs> in all of my um, presuppositions about what's going on here. So also the white words in the creation book, someone's heart has been left empty. She has been wanting for something more. Will she turn away? Will she be turned away? A woman like this, keeps her cup close. And, and then Tarot's commentary here, the mutant Tarot. Ah, oh, a sad card. In my deck, the cups are all overturned here on the picture. The person this reading is for, something is missing in their life. They must walk away, or perhaps they already have. This is a wound. That's absolutely the case when it comes down to it. And like I said, I believe that this is Genesis and we're talking about, you know, her being dejected and um, Apocalypse cared more for her survival than he cared for his wife and his children and he left them for dead. And of course, that just shows even more what kind of person Apocalypse is, person, quote unquote. Uh, really looking forward to seeing what happens, and, and and hopefully my predictions are correct. I'd love to hear what you have to say as well. Like I keep saying, just drop it in the comments below. Um, last card, and this is uh, you know this is of course what this entire event is about. We're talking about the Ten of Swords, and this is quite the card. This is a very dark card. You know when a lot of people in tarot they say, oh no, you drew the Death card. Uh, well, the Death card is actually a very positive card. It means a positive change and a rebirth. Um, th this card is actually the death card <laughs> when it comes down to it. Um, there's three cards, two cards, the, the three cards that I believe are the most destructive out of all of them. There's the tower, there's the three of swords, which is the, um, the, the worst heartbreak possible. I'm talking about emotional heartbreak usually. And then there's this one. And this is, uh, this is the, the, the death of God card, quite literally in this deck that I'm, I'm using currently. It is destruction. It is the death of the old self. It is critique that's necessary and painful. It's removing old thought patterns. This is the dark night of the soul leading to rebirth, but this is the act of God dying before that occurs. So this is the end of everything, quite literally. And we're seeing this as the final card <laughs> in this series of the X-Men. And so uh, I really like the, the way that these cards have unfolded. And I really think that Teeny Howard knows tarot really, really well. Um, uh, just to say this, um, I have a, a newfound respect for her. Uh, bravo. This is fantastic. So in the free comic book day, it says betrayal. Betrayed by those you would show your back. A loss, but an expected loss. One always expects a sunset hours after the dawn. Interesting. So the next commentary in the other book, ah, here it is then, my light in the darkness, something I've long desired flickers just out of my reach. But for the ones who hold the blades, a great match lights the darkness indeed. So we are already talking about the light after the destruction. That's good because that's the final part of this card in the deck, the Ten of Swords, Tarot's commentary from creation. She says, sometimes the darkest hour is before the dawn, yes, but also sometimes it is simply darkness. I cannot be sure. In any case, what is causing you pain? The pain will be the worst you have ever felt, but then it will be gone. You will feel it no more. And Tarot says, whomever this reading is meant for, I hope it reaches them. Things seem 
very serious. <laughs> this is a serious tarot reading indeed. The way that these cards unfold, Judgment, Four of Wands, The Hanged Man, Eight of Cups, and Ten of Swords. It is dire circumstance and rebirth. Every one of these cards has a is a symbol of rebirth. So we're literally talking about the phoenix rising from the ashes, the death of the old self, and becoming new again. This is a part of the hero's journey, and it always will be. Again, I always love to talk about storytelling when it comes to tarot cards. You know, we're looking at this from a perspective where the, the first part of the tarot deck, the greater arcana, all of these unfold to look at the hero's journey from Joseph Campbell's mythology. Uh, these cards are closely intertwined with that whole perspective. Tarot is a way to tell stories, but even deeper than that, it's a way to look at something that might have been and say, I don't want that for my future. I want to change that possibility and I want to grow instead of create this horror that I see in front of me. As far as this book goes, it's already been written. <laughs> this entire event has um, been predicted here, and I hope, I hope that we see more tarot cards because I want to make more videos like this. This is probably my favorite uh, video I've made in a long time, honestly. Um, I'm really enjoying this. I hope that you'll join me. I hope that you'll subscribe. I'm going to cover every single one of these books for Ten of Swords in some way. This is one of the few videos that I haven't scripted whatsoever. I've just talked about when it comes to tarot. Uh, it's really easy for me to do so. So, um, like I said, I hope you subscribe. I hope you watch my reviews on all of these uh, stories. And I, I hope you read this X-Men event with me. Watch it unfold. Support your local comic shop. You are the gateway into comics.